Yeah, hello, Facebook. It's Reed Mihalko from ReadAboutSex.com. And Allison Moon from GirlSex101.com. Okay. Um, so one thing, let us know if you can hear us. I think I fixed the mic. I, I realized why it was low the other day. And today we're going blackberry picking. <laughs> Hence, it's the inspired the topic, how do you pick the right relationship? <laughs> um, which sounds silly, but uh, I think it, um, it's going to make sense. No, we're going this way. So again, we're on the train tracks. We're not on the train tracks, we're next to the train tracks. We're next to the train tracks. And it's noisy because the BART just went by. Um, so can you hear us? And where are you listening in from? There are blackberry bushes, um, humongous ones. Hang on. Do you see all that green there? Those are all blackberries. Um, and so we're going to, uh, to eat some and to pick some. And then I'm doing low carbs right now. So I realized, ah, blackberries have a lot of carbs, no, but they actually don't. they kind of don't because they're filled with fiber. Yep. Um, and fiber is not a carb. <laughs> uh, it's not an effective carb, I think is oh, the lingo. Oh, wow, they are right. Look, look. Look, it's the blackberry jam. It's not at all the blackberry jam. <laughs> Hang on, I can't get in. It's all, they're, they're all protected. There you go. Oh, is that it? Can you see? You can't see them yet. Gosh darn it. <laughs> Here we go. Wait, no, no. Where can I show you? I have to show you the blackberries. There we go. Here we go. Here we go. No. Ah, the thorns. <laughs> You see him? God <laughs> dang it. Camera. Well, it's like, I can't. Oh, here we go, here we go. I should have brought gloves. I'm sorry. Uh, can you see them now? Can you see the blackberries now? They're here. They're looking delicious. Sun ripened and warmed. Um, they can hear us. <laughs> okay, that's good. Good. All right, so we're going to start picking berries here. Um, we're probably gonna wash most of them. Yeah. They they look a little uh, hobo pee. A little maybe they've got like uh, hobo no, pee. No, don't say that. <laughs> That's not the right word. Animal critter pee, <laughs> dust from the uh, highway. Um, so I just realized it's not gonna look great at all. This is gonna be a horrible film because it's just us picking things. Um, we don't, don't have to move very much. It's fine. <laughs> oh, that has a spider on it <laughs> or a ladybug. Uh, let's oh wait. Let's stand in the shade okay. and give advice, <laughs> and then we can eat things. All right, here and there. Um, so, what kind of advice do you have for picking a good relationship? <laughs> how, did, how did how did you know to pick me? Well, this is actually kind of a deeper cut. I was hoping to work up to this, but since you asked, um, I find that having a type can help with dating. Having types can help with dating, uh, can help build profiles if you're going to date online, talking specifically about what you're interested in, mm -hmm. but I find it's best to not hew too carefully to the type because oftentimes the real good stuff comes in packages you don't necessarily expect. Oh, maybe like uh, berry bushes by the railroad tracks. Sure. Sure. Uh, so, in my, again, we, I talked about this the other day, but I was a lesbian for many, many years before I met Reed. Reed didn't make me not a lesbian, but I did start to reevaluate my, what I considered to be my type, which was mm -hmm. women, because I found a man who spoke to my soul and heart in a way that not really any men had before. Yeah, but, um, uh, okay. but that, is, that sounds like it's less about gender and more about relationship like the kind of relationship that I was looking for and my life values and the things that I wanted to create and experience in my world and then also my roommate habits were all a good fit for you because if, if, if it had been a woman or you know somebody who is genderqueer or something like that who fit all of the nooks and crannies of what was a good fit for you yeah, then, but that's, then it that's true. it's not a gender thing in that if I had if I had hewed to what I thought was the only gender I liked, I wouldn't have given myself permission to fall in love with you. Mm -hmm. So your gender was incredibly important, and at the same time, if if I found a woman or a, somebody a gender non-conforming person of any identity 
that had all what you had, if you if the package of you just happened to be in a different form, I probably would have fallen for that person too. Wow. But the fact is, I had to overlook what I considered oh. to be my type in order to give myself permission to fall. Got it. So, it, so it, it the, the point you were making that I was not picking up because I was being distracted by delicious berries, um, is that understanding that you might that you have a type, so that you can step out of the this type only and be open to more yeah that was the the thing that you were communicating yes got it and I, again like not everybody who's monosexual is going to find that to be a thing that they want to do and I don't, i'm not saying that every lesbian or every gay man has to like consider people of other genders in order for, for for love to exist i'm just saying that i think it's helpful sometimes to to realize that the types that we assign to ourselves aren't prescriptions they're mm -hmm. usually just descriptions that's bumper sticker worthy right there is it no no okay uh, so let's, that's, let's that's get some more berries and talk some more because <laughs> um, we're out of berries um here's some right here um so for folks who have heard me talk about dating your species um so the thing that i would kind of talk about is one like know your type because again if you found if you found me in somebody who was uh like a queer dyke or something like that so can, sorry can i but, just be keep the metaphor going a little bit more yeah. I think you need to be a little bit choosier, baby. Choosier than my... Oh, are you thinking I'm picking bad berries? I do. Why? I'm going to eat most of them. Some of them are not good. Look at that one. Oh, you're right. Ugh. That one's not good. All right, so how do you be How do you be choosy? Be both be choosy and open. Yeah. How do you be choosy? I'm getting into bushes here. Um, relationship advice while Allison Moon is picking blackberries. Um, so one of the things to understand, if you're not limiting yourself by type, but you know what is a good fit, like what is, um, here I'm going to give you the selfie stick, like how do you know when somebody is ripe for the picking? Um, <laughs> if you tug and they don't come willingly, they're not the right one. Yeah. Make sure it's all consensual. <laughs> but I, well, I mean, I guess like let's see, let's see if we can how, how far we can take this berry <laughs> this is metaphor. Terrible. No, this is hilarious. <laughs> um, but the idea of being like, if you're trying to fit somebody in to make them a good fit for you, maybe that is the definition of they're already not a good fit. Yes. Um, the whole where, notion of like if they love me enough, they'll change for me is damaging, and I think it's a Hollywood trope that has been. Uh, that ultimately has made a lot more headaches than it has solved. I think most of the time when you find somebody, I, I think that they should be ready to wear, so to speak. Um, not necessarily something that needs a lot of work in order to fix them, to mold them to be your person. So move in ready? Yeah. Move in ready or, or uh, you buy the relationship right off the rack? Yeah, I mean there's a lot of growing together that happens in relationships, but ultimately if somebody has fundamental aspects of their personality that, that don't work for you and they don't want to change them, then I think that's that's a thing that doesn't fit. It's like trying on a dress or a pair of jeans and saying like, oh, these will be great when I lose 20 pounds. It's like, well, then they're not the, the right jeans for you. If you have to lose 20 pounds for them to fit, that's not the right fit. Um, okay, we've exhausted this metaphor over right here. Right there. Where? That's far away. You can get it. What if I fall? Oh, come back. back into the metaphor. I hope this is fun for everyone because I'm just, this was just an excuse I'm to eat blackberries. I'm going to get those because those are the right ones. Um, Sometimes you need to extend yourself. So, oh wow. She just kind of ashamed me. Berry picking shamed me, ladies and gentlemen. Um, now, I'm just going to say, Allison moved closer to the berries so that she was not precariously perched over a thicket of thorns. Um, so if I had failed, it would have been very painful. Um, so it makes blackberry picking so so rewarding. Well, yeah, I guess what I'm. What makes I'm, love I think, so rewarding is that sometimes it hurts, but it's a good hurt. Wow, I'm just I'm failing everybody because of my greed for blackberries. Um, so so here's 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 my advice around this, and I'll read the comments to everybody who's being really patient with us right now <laughs> as we're distracted by food. Um, I really think that like putting in the work to find if your relationship is a good fit. Um, to have the difficult conversations with each other, um, to figure out 
you know, and get clarity on what it is you, you really want out of a relationship. Like, what's your intention for being in a relationship at all? Because um, a lot of people, again, I pardon that we're trying to, I'm working the hell out of this metaphor. <laughs> Some people wait until they're starving and then they eat all the unripe fruit and then they complain that it tastes sour. Um, that was good. I pulled that one out of my butt. Um, whereas, like, if you, if you can, again, if you're starving, you know, you need to eat something, right? But sometimes you can last a little bit longer than making poor food choices. Um, that doesn't mean it's, it's comfortable, it doesn't mean it's easy, but if your relationship life, your dating life, has constantly been making these poor decisions, um, then can you find better advice, better tools and skill sets so that you can start to turn that around? So that you're not going berry picking, starving. Um, so that you can wait it out, you can take care of yourself um, and take care of your needs while you're waiting for the right relationship to come along, the right person or the right time or the right group of people. Um, but again, if, if you're just waiting and building up your ability to, to fast, so to speak, without building up your, your skill sets for what's a good fit, I don't know how you pick the, a better person the next time. Are you just constantly, you know, picking what's in front of you versus doing, doing the work to really find um, what it is that's a good fit? Great! Woo! Um, wow, this is an like, action-packed day today. Um, so we are by train track, so no surprise. Um, yeah, so these, these ideas of getting clarity about what is a good fit for you. Um, when is it just a little extra work that you do willingly because sometimes relationships take work versus you are, you're making a mistake. Um, and are you dating people uh, or investigating relationships with people who've also done this kind of work and inquiry um, so that you can have a real adult's conversation with them about their wants, needs, and desires. Because I think part of the challenge is, since a lot of us started trying to have relationships when we were younger, some of us older, but you know, we learned about what our needs were as we were, we were having the relationships. Um, and so we discover what works and what doesn't work while it's happening. Um, and the challenge is, I, I think, for the people who've had several relationships, um, you don't actually start turning people away who you know are a bad fit. You just double down to commit to working harder on the next relationship. Um, but what you did was you still pick somebody who is a bad fit, and now you're just committing to working harder to make it work, um, rather than realizing, oh, you know, I shouldn't. You know, like for me, I shouldn't date people who are monogamous. That's horrible. That's a horrible idea. Um, it would be like if you are allergic to blackberries. Why are you picking blackberries? Why are you picking blackberries while starving? Of course, if you're hungry and this is the only thing to eat and you're picking them, you will eat them. Nobody has that much willpower. Um, so. Is this making sense? Yeah. yeah. No, I was going to add that I think what you're saying, the whole fasting metaphor and the whole um, starving metaphor makes sense. I think that one of the things that people asked me for a long time about when I, when I found you, like why, what made it work so well, was that I, I had a bad breakup at the end of college, or mi middle of college, um, and I had to relearn how to do everything alone, because I had had a partner that we did all the things together, going to movies to get where we you want to pick more? Or is yeah. that okay, now she's into it. Jesus. She didn't want to come out and pick a whole bunch, and now she's into it. All right, go. So Here, I had to relearn how to do things like um, like going to eat alone at the dining hall or going to movies alone. And it was really painful and really horrible, and I hated it. And But eventually I relearned how to do all these things alone, which I considered to be a kind of training ground for adult relationships because 
when I met Reed, I was very happily single. I had a recent breakup, but I, it wasn't a good relationship that we needed to keep going. And so I was fine being on my own. I wasn't starving. I was well fed by my life. I had friends, I had hobbies, I had a career that I really loved. So everything was great. And so when Reed walked into my life, it was just extra. It was just a thing that I wanted to add to my life. But if he didn't like, if, if he and I weren't a good fit, Either one of us could have walked away and I wouldn't have felt like I needed to cling to something that wasn't going to work. Now, I know that everybody's got their different experiences with loneliness and with the, the need of human contact, and I think that that's all perfectly valid, but I tend to tell people when they're looking for relationships to get really good at being alone and foster a very rich life outside of romantic relationships because when the relationship comes, if it, if it does come, you'll just be adding something great to an already wonderful life. And if it never comes, then you're living a wonderful life anyway. You're already going out and doing the things you would want to do. So when people say like, I'm waiting to travel the world until I have a partner to do it with, why the fuck don't you just travel the world now and meet other world travelers on the road? If you're waiting for your life to begin, to find a partner that is willing to share it with you, I think that you're putting the cart before the horse. The horse before the cart? cart before the horse. I think you're doing things backwards. I thought you were on a boat. <laughs> yeah, so I think you're doing things backwards. I think you should create the rich life that you want to live and romance and love will often find you doing the things that you're having a wonderful time doing, which I think tends to also make you more attractive to people. Because if you're having a wonderful time living a vibrant life, that's attractive. That's sexy. Well, um, you can also live a vibrant life and still be lonely. Oh, absolutely. But I think filling your life with things and people and love of different kinds can help. And yes, you might want somebody in your bed at night, but I think it's a lot less lonely if you have other wonderful things going on. All right. We got a ton of these. What do you think? Was this fun? Was this a good idea? There are so many blackberries here. Show them. So many blackberries. Oh we barely even picked a tiny percent of them. My it's like a purple. metaphor for love. There's so many blackberries in the bush. And if you try and you get hurt a little bit <laughs> or you get you bite into something a little sour, don't give up. <laughs> don't give up. Because over time they will ripen. Um, and then uh, I don't want to say that your, your hands will toughen and you won't feel the pain anymore. But maybe you can get gloves. Yeah, why don't we get gloves? No, it's better this way. Why? It hurts like hell. It's better this way. If the pain is part of it. Oh, that's bullshit. Get some gloves mm -hmm. the next time you pick blackberries. Mm -hmm. um, if you can, wait until they're ripe. Learn how to judge a good one from a bad one. And then make sure you wash the pee off your relationships. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Where can people find you? Girlsex101.com. Dot com or Twitter. Uh, Readaboutsex.com forward slash Vulcan, V U L C A N, to get a free video on the inverted Vulcan technique. And then if you're coming to Sex Geek Summer Camp, time's running out. Get uh, Register soon. Uh, Readaboutsex.com forward slash Camp F A Q. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Blackberries. Ciao. <laughs>